What is up, guys? Today, we are going to go over loops in our Python lesson. Uh, so let's dive right into it. So I have a script file here, and I want to make this uh, file available on my website. So if you just want to copy and paste it and study the code along with me, you can do that. Uh, so basically, when you're programming, there's two common ways to do loops. And basically, all a loop is, is it allows you to execute a piece of code repeatedly. Now, how exactly you go about doing that, how many times you do that, is kind of dependent on the type of loop that you use. So the first loop that we're going to cover is the while loop. And while loops are used to execute a piece of code while a condition is met. So, let's go ahead and show you an example here. All right, so we have a while loop here. And so the first thing we're doing is we're initializing the variable x and we're giving it the value of one. Okay, so remember that right now, x equals one. And this is the first line of our while loop. You'll type the text while, space, and then the condition in which the while loop should loop. In this case, the while loop should loop if true, equals true and obviously true will always equal true so this while loop will basically just keep looping until true equals false which we know is never going to happen so this loop theoretically will continue to run infinitely all right so now let's go ahead and jump inside our loop and look at the actual code that will be executed and this is all the code right here that is contained with inside the while loop. So let's look, the first line we have is a print statement. And we are printing the text, we will shut down at count 10,000. And then we're displaying the value of X right here. And remember, we got to wrap it in the stir function um, because X is not a string, it's a number. So in order for this line to execute without any errors, we got to wrap it in that stir function. All right, next we have an if statement. And what we're saying is if x is equal to 100,000, then what we're going to do is print the text shutting down. And then you can see we have this command called break. And this is important and you'll use this a lot when looping. The break statement allows you to exit or end a loop. So by running this code right here, the break statement, when our code hits this, it basically is going to end the loop and it will exit out and move down and continue on with the program. So that's how we're going to um, allow this while loop to stop the execution because we're gonna do that manually with the break statement. Okay, so if when we go through our if statement, if x does not equal to 100,000, then we're going to skip these two lines and we're going to move to our next line of the loop and that is x plus equals one and basically what that is saying add the value or let me start over it's saying add one to x so if x was seven this statement would now make x eight so this is basically the same thing as doing x equals x plus one Oop, one but it's just a shorthand way of doing the same thing. All right, <clears throat> so there you have it. That's what this while loop's gonna do. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's come over here and let's run it. And let's see what we get. So theoretically what should happen is this while loop should print to the screen. We'll shut down at count 10,000 and it's going to say one and it's going to print the same line again. And the next time it'll be two, three, so on and so forth until we get to 100,000. Print the text shutting down and then exit the loop. As a matter of fact, let's just put a statement here that says you have exited the loop. All right, let's save that and let's run it. And you can see it spit out. Oh, sorry, that was 10,000. I thought it was 100,000. Oh, it was. I yeah, I made an error there. Let's do that one more time so it looks accurate. 
Uh, much better. Okay. So we'll shut down at count 100,000. And as you can see, we count from one all the way to 100,000. We print the text shutting down, which is right here. Our break code gets executed. So we skip out of the loop. That means we skip over this line right here. And then we print our, you have exited the loop. And that's what you see right here. So that is while loop. Um, something else we could have done is had a value of uh, y of false. Changed our while loop to y. And instead of breaking, we could set our y value to false and that would cause the while loop to uh, exit or to complete because while will continue to loop while y is equal to true. So by setting y to false, it's gonna check that and say, okay, we're done and it's gonna exit out. So let's go ahead and save that and give that a go. Oh, that's right, we're using Python. So we want to use the is operator. Uh, and if I remember correctly, also I think we need to capitalize. Um, all right, let's try that. Um, can we not use the is? Oops, don't need that is there. All right, this should do it. Okay. All right, so now let's move on. So next we're gonna cover four loops. And for loops are basically used when you want a piece of code to execute um, an X number of times. So let's jump into a very simple for loop right here. Okay, so we have for X, which this is our value that will be incrementing or decrementing. It just depends on what you're doing. Um, for X in, and then we use X range, which gives us a range of numbers from zero to three. Now I want you to pay attention to these numbers and then pay attention to the output. Um, so let's go ahead and save this. And as you see, we're just going to print we're on time and then the value. And let's run that. So you can see we have printed to the screen three times we're on time zero, we're on time one, and we're on time two. Now you noticed it incremented three times and started with the value from zero. Now you might think, well that should be four, so this should have printed out one more time, but no. Once we get here, we stop, we do not execute this line, and we move on and out of the for loop. So that's a very basic for loop. So let's change that just so you can see another variant and what happens. And now we've printed that to the screen nine times, starting with the value zero. Okay, now you can also have nested loops, and a nested loop is a loop with inside a loop. So it's basically two loops. So we have the value of x, in our loop and we're going to loop from 1 to 11. Notice this time we're starting with the value 1. And then our next loop is the value y and we are also looping 1 through 11. And then we have a print statement and we are printing to the screen the value of x, um, the multiplication sign, the value of y equals and the total of x times y. So looking at this, what we should have is the first time we go through this loop, x is going to equal 1. And then we get to our next loop, 
And at this point, y will also equal 1. So on our very first statement, we should have x, which is 1, times y, which is 1, equals 1. The next time around, we're going to be with inside the second for loop. We won't go back up to the top just yet because we have to finish this for loop before we go back to the top one. So this next time around, x is still going to be one because remember, we haven't hit here yet, so it hasn't incremented. However, we have incremented on the y value. So the second time around, y is going to equal two and therefore we should have one times two equals two. So let's go ahead and run this code and see the output. And there you have it. And you can see we have went through each one. One times one is one, one times two, and that's our first loop through. And then we complete, and then we hit the second one, which now x is two, and now we loop through the y once again 10 times. And then we repeat that until we have gone through all of them, outputting the total for the multiplication for 1 through 10. And that's a nested loop, and those can be very useful for a lot of different tasks. All right, so let's move on to our next one. Actually, we've already covered this. This is the early exit kind of jumped ahead there and that's basically just showing you the break statement and that's how you can exit a loop and in this case we're going to exit a for statement or a for loop uh, rather um, early so basically we have 4x in the range of 3 so it's just going to go 0 to 3 and then we have an if statement inside there if x is equal to 2 we're going to break and we're going to exit the for loop otherwise we're going to print the value of x. So let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see, once x equal 2, we broke from the for loop, which means we never got to print the value of 2. Perfect. So let's move on to the next. All right, now we have the for else, which is basically exactly like a for loop. The only difference is we have an else statement on the end, and then inside that else statement, you put whatever code you want to execute once the for loop has completed. Let's go ahead and run this. So you can see we uh, went from x into x range 3, which will be 0 to 3. We print the value 0, 1, and then 2. That's the third iteration, so we exit the for loop, and then we hit our else, and then we print the final value. Pretty simple. Okay, you can also for loop um, through other i iterations, excuse me, iterations. So, for example, we have this string hello world and let's say we wanted to loop through this string and, pre and print each character to the screen well a for loop can let you do that very easily so what we do is we have for x and this is our value and then we have in string so x is going to equal each character in our value in our variable so basically this loop should pre print each character to the screen one line at a time. So let's go ahead and save this and give it a go. There you have it. So that makes it really easy to um, iterate through various objects, strings, and, uh, and other values. So let's do one more example. And this one is going to, going to be a list object. And um, a list object is pretty much what it says. It's a list of objects. And those objects don't have to necessarily be the same um, data type or variable type. As you can see in this instance, we have a string variable, one. Then we have the numeric variable, two. And then we have the string variable, three, again. So the idea is we're going to use a for loop 
to I, to I, to iterate through this collection, this list collection here, and print each variable in the collection to the screen. So let's save this. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see each object in this list was printed to the screen. One, two, and three. And there you have it. That's loops. We covered the while loop and we covered the for loop and the various ways that you could use these loops. Um, now in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to kind of put all these pieces together and we're going to pr uh, create a um, basically simulate the SSH login prompt. And then I'll kind of show you some ideas on how you could use that to attempt to collect um, credentials um, or create a back door. Uh, so I appreciate you guys for watching. Be sure to like these videos if you enjoy them. And I will see you guys on the other side.